This is meteorologist Mark Molnar. I want to thank you for joining me for this edition of Hurricane Northeastern and Weather Northeastern. Yes, the tropics, it's that time of year. I'm starting early. I know it's not officially hurricane season in the Atlantic Basin, but I wanted to fill you in on a few things that will be happening. Yes, the next five days seem pretty quiet, but guess what? Beyond days like 9, 10, 11, we get into later next week after, say, uh, May 20th. We start to get into something interesting that could form in the Gulf of Mexico. Will this be our first name storm of the season before the June 1st? Well, let's get right into it. I'll show you exactly what I mean. And if you haven't viewed my Hurricane Outlook for 2021, it is in the link in the description down below. Also, while you're down there down below, subscribe and hit that bell button. Yes, that you'll be alerted. The tropic season is my bread and butter, if you haven't noticed that over the last several years. So without wasting any more time, uh, let's get into it. We do have some uh, cool weather in the east we'll talk about too, and some nice weather for this weekend. Let's get right into it. Uh, taking a look at the Tropic Basin here, I knew this is uh, before the hurricane season starts, but I like to start things early. Uh, let's take a look at uh, the Atlantic Basin. We have those triple high pressures in control. It is pretty boring, at least through May 18th. Uh, the jet stream towards the weekend will start to ride a little bit higher across the U.S. East Coast. For the time being, it will be a bit troughiness here in the east. Uh, but however, there is something uh, on the horizon, as I talked about in the beginning, in the Gulf of Mexico uh, that I do want to alert you to. Uh, and it's not on this map. I do have the possibility there marked in the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, across the Atlantic there, you can see the Saharan dust being kicked up here off the coast of Africa. I don't really expect a big dust season out here into the eastern Atlantic, but I do think it's worth mentioning because dust can have an effect on tropical development. It can kind of squelch development downward a bit. Um, so let's take a look at that satellite view. Here's that satellite view briefly. You don't see too many features. You see that uh, troughiness across the U.S. East Coast, but your eyes are drawn to uh, out here off the coast of Africa, uh, northwestern Africa, Cape Verde Island area. You can see all of that uh, brown particles up in the air there um, that where you'd normally see clouds. That is the dust that's being spun off of Africa at this time, and it will continue to preclude development. We don't really see development out here this time of year, though. Let's get right into the models. First frame here of the model, this is what I'm going to show you with the, the tropical feature that could develop in the Gulf of Mexico come after, say, the 21st, 22nd of May. Now, you take this with a grain of salt. This is one model. This is the GFS. Uh, I do like to get into this because this is my bread and butter. I like to go out a little bit further, see the overall pattern for the tropics, especially as we near hurricane season here, the start of it anyways. You see that uh, feature there uh, around Cuba, you know, all that the shower and thunderstorm activity. There it is. You see it there? It's the beginning of the weekend, next weekend. Then here we go. We get later in the day on Saturday, May 22nd. See how things start to form here? Uh, this feature goes to the, is, is pinwheeling around this high pressure system off the coast of the Carolinas at 1025 millibar high. You see down here uh, between uh, Cuba, uh, Florida Keys, and then just west of it, you get this long drawn out area of low pressure. Showers and thunderstorms developing along it. Now you can see in the central Gulf of Mexico by Saturday night, this is uh, getting into May 22nd, early May 23rd, the low pressure system, GFS is starting to hint of a closed low pressure system in the central Gulf of Mexico, 10, 14 millibar low. You see showers and thunderstorms continue on the east side of this low pressure system uh, that's exiting Cuba and west of the Florida Keys. So this is dead center right in the Gulf of Mexico. Now we're heading into Sunday morning, May 23rd. Uh, low pressure continues to move towards the northwest. It doesn't look horribly strong, but you got to take these models with a grain of salt because this far out, the models are not going to have a very good ideal on intensity. But you see this moisture plume that the system has going all the way just south of New Orleans, uh, where the low pressure is, all the way down to the Florida Keys and down into the Bahamas. Look at that fetch off of this uh, pinwheeling around this 1025 millibar high pressure that's very stubborn to the east here. This seems to be heading towards the Louisiana, Texas area. Next frame here, and here it is. Sunday night, heading into May 23rd into 24th, early morning hours of the May 24th. Low pressure continuing to slow down as it nears the Louisiana coastline, uh, just south of, you know, central Louisiana. It was really hit hard last year, so this this is not very good news, but this is pretty far out. 
and you see that uh, frontal boundary well to the north. So it doesn't look, it seems to be getting drawn up into this frontal boundary across Texas, Oklahoma, and Missouri. And there it is, last frame Monday, uh, mid morning, I would say, May 24th here. You got low pressure, 1,009 millibars. Don't really pay too much attention to the intensity this far out. But look at that. There it is. That's a feature. That's a feature we need to watch. And that could be possibly some sort of subtropical system, maybe even tropical system this early out. And we've seen this again and again during the last several years. We've had a system before June 1st. So will we see it again? This, this might be our shot here. And that last frame, you see that right there. That's where it has it making some sort of potential landfall right there along the Texas-Louisiana border. So we need to watch this and look at all that moisture plume just south of Louisiana down into the Yucatan and Cuba. This is a lot of tropical moisture for this time of year. Is this any, any indication of what the tropical season is going to be like? I really think it is. And taking a look at the temperature departure from average, take a look at this, from May 13th to May 16th, takes us through much of the end of the week into the weekend here. We're looking at temperatures uh, pretty much below normal, especially across the deep south here. Uh, this is not to say that you won't have nice weather. You probably will for the most part. We're going to see a very big decrease in the severe weather, which is very good news. Um, to say the least, because you have been having a lot of severe weather here across the south. But here across the northeast, we'll be anywhere from 3 to 5 degrees of below normal, especially this weekend. But it won't feel like that because you've been so cold for so long. So you'll be approaching 70 in many areas. So this is not too bad. We'll still slowly warm it up next week. Here you have it. Severe weather, non-existent. That's great news, isn't it? Many across the south are sick and tired of that severe weather. That is one positive aspect of having those colder temperatures down south. So there you have it. No severe weather I'm expecting through late weekend, May 16th. Taking a look at the NAO index, look at this. You pretty much see that uh, when spring came along, it was time for the NAO to go negative because you know that's why just things go. Uh, we pretty much stayed uh, through the latter portion of winter time. Uh, from February onward, he stayed uh, the positive NAO index, uh, but as soon as springtime came along, there you have it. So we're going to continue to stay negative. We'll still have that bouts of storminess, especially back east. And there it is, precipitation totals. Not much on both coastlines, but look at that right in between. We have a lot of tropical moisture that will be feeding into some of the frontal boundaries here across the midsection of the country. Uh, this does not include later next week when we get into that potential for that tropical system, whatever that may be, in the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, so this is a precursor, but we will have a lot of tropical moisture that will be feeding into Texas. So Texas will be getting quite a bit up towards Kansas and Missouri as we have those stalled out frontal boundaries continuing and storming us. Taking a look at your upper air pattern, look at this. Take it with a grain of salt, shall we? Yeah, it looks really, it looks a lot worse than it is. It will have below average temperatures across the east, especially the deep south. But the, the really good thing here is the lack of severe weather. We just won't have the dynamics due to all that cold air pouring down. Now, it's not going to be bitter cold. Yeah, you'll be anywhere from 15 to 20 degrees below average. But look at that. Across the northeast, you'll only be about 3 to 5 degrees below average. That means you'll be heading towards 70 in many areas across the northeast. Not too bad. You'll have that upper level low will be moving out as well. This trough will slowly kick out of the east into next week. And viewers send in photos and videos. Derek Rentschler from Lebanon County, Pennsylvania. Look at this. Back on May 8th of 2021 here. A very beautiful, nice rainbow across the Lebanon County area. Had a lot of rain showers in the area. And sun coming out behind these rainfall. Creating these nice rainbow effects. Nice capture there, Derek. Taking a look at your Thursday across the northeast. Look at that. You can't get any better than that brilliant sunshine. Uh, not a cloud in the sky. You will have a frosty start across many parts of the valley. So location, especially upstate New York. And to northern Pennsylvania and parts of New England. But after we burn off all that frost and uh, fog and clouds. Look at that. You really get into some really brilliant sunshine. You'll almost wish it was TGIF. Because look at that. You'll get out of work. And it will be brilliant. That big ball of bright light in the sky. So there it gets, gets, sets us up for Friday. And there it is. Look at that. That's the day of the week you always wait for. Look at that. We do have some scattered showers, albeit a small chance, 20 to 30 percent. 
the, the big story will be the temperatures. We pretty much are pushing towards 70, and if not 70s in many areas, look at that New York City, nice place to go this time of year. Long Island, we're pretty much staying dry as well into Boston. Most of the scattered showers will be during the afternoon, evening hours across parts of upstate New York, northeast Pennsylvania, into central and southern Pennsylvania as well. But for the most part, looking really good. And here it is. Look at that. Saturday. It's many people's favorite day of the week as well. Look at that. We're starting to scour out. We'll have that chance of a scattered shower, uh, maybe up to 20%. But for the most part, the real big story here is not going to be the rain. It's going to be, we will have a lot of sun in between those raindrops. And look at that. Lots of lower 70s. This is really brilliant. It's really nice. And it will set you up for a really really nice Sunday. I promise you that. Let's let's get right into Sunday here. And there it is. Look at that. Sunday. This, this is by far probably the best day on my forecast list here. And look at that. Uh, sunny and double sevens down in through ports of New York City and Harrisburg. This is really brilliant. Once again, I'm using the word brilliant a lot here, but look at that. 72, my favorite number in Binghamton, and State College, 72 in Albany, and look at that. Even in the North Country, low 70s. Yeah, we'll have that chance of a scattered shower in the Hudson Valley, lower Susquehanna Valley, into all of New England. But as I said, this is only a 20% chance. It's not an all-day washout. And there it is, extended outlook. Yeah, we start off frosty Thursday morning. This is the upper Susquehanna Valley from Binghamton to Scranton. Susquehanna region of upstate New York and northeast Pennsylvania, 32 for a low on Thursday. That is the coldest start. But look at that. We make it up towards the upper 60s, near 70 by Friday. Saturday, yeah, we have a scat chance of a scattered shower, but mostly sunny through most of the day. Up towards the lower 70s, both Saturday and Sunday and Monday. Now this, yeah, this actually will be a tad below normal, but guess what? It will seem like it's above normal because we've been so cold for so long and our weather has been so darn crummy. So there you have it. This is something to dance for joy for. Look at that beautiful weather. Enjoy. As always, I want to thank you for joining me for this edition of Hurricane Northeastern and Weather Northeastern. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell button so you're alerted when I come out with one of these videos. Facebook at MediaMark, Weather Northeastern, and also WX Northeastern on Twitter, Hurricane Northeastern. Also on Facebook, it's MediaMark.com and WeatherNortheastern.com. Thank you once again for joining me.